so it's, uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? Shall we actually uh, get back to Peru? Hello and welcome back to Vamos to the Top. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode of the transfer special ahead of the new season. Now, first of all, thank you for your patience. We've not had a Vamos to the Top episode for over a week now, and that's because there is a, a change in content on the channel. I did detail this all in a post on uh, Discord and on Twitter as well, but of course not everyone's going to see that. But I would recommend following me on Twitter and joining the Discord. Links to both are in the description. But the long and short of it is, um, I just want to change the content style of the channel up. I've been doing the same thing for like five years in a row. So I feel like something's got to change a little bit. And of course, Let's Play stuff like this is still going to be a part of that just less frequently and in a differently edited style so today's transfer special is probably actually going to be very similar to how it normally is but I think the normal episodes lot in between transfer specials are going to be a bit different so we'll see how those go and if you guys like them but let's actually get properly into today's episode so last time you were here was for the playoff final for the title which we lost and then won, but actually lost overall because the game seems to be a little bit glitched out in that respect. But we did lose it. Sporting Crystal are the title holders. So this season, we need a team that is capable of beating Sporting Crystal, but also a team that is capable of doing something in the Copa Libertadores. Now, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the team. Like, we seem to be the second best team in Peru. And of course, we can always improve in every area, but with the budget that we've got... I genuinely think like what we've got right now is, is pretty decent. Now we do need some new wing backs coming in and I'd actually argue that maybe Caballero and Moreno should become the backup wing backs. We could also do with more centre backs coming into the club as well but I'm pretty happy with the centre midfield and the wings and the attack and I think this upcoming season we need to move Carpio from the wing to the centre of midfield. I think that might actually be better for him potentially and it allows Sandoval who's been one of our best players through this entire series to have a bit more game time. We have got some big issues though because all of these players here as you can see are running out of contract and I'm not entirely sure what to do with the players who aren't in positions. Now we need to get new contracts offered out to Lucao, uh, Danny Morales, Juan Tuesta and Kevin Moreno immediately. Ah, I've kind of bottled it with Danny Morales. Um, hmm. Not too much of a big loss though. Oh, and I've bottled the Kevin Moreno one as well. This, hmm... We might lose these players then. I also think I want to give new contracts to Rocha and Soros because they are quite useful players to have, but Gabriel Delgado, Hamir and Valentino Sandoval, who's not the actual Sandoval, he's a different Sandoval, he's not that good, um, they can all leave. Ah, Wesley Soros actually doesn't want to sign a new contract with us. Okay, well, he's going too. But there are some players we can look to bring in, and I think the first player we need to look to bring in is Mateo Ortiz, who is a Ecuadorian 23-year-old right back, who's also six foot two. We can get him on a free, and I think it would be a pretty decent addition to the team. He does, though, want three grand a week in wages. Oh, that's a big, big oh, outlay. Um, can we go like 2.3? I don't think he's going to like that at all in the slightest. We can't really touch the bonuses too much, otherwise he will get quite cross. But we'll leave him the release fee clause. We'll leave him there. In fact, I might put him to 20% just to try and keep him happy. Because um, I don't think we'll send him for any sort of big money down the line. He, uh, he just wants that 3k. Two and a half. At... He, he accepts that, okay. Also, as a replacement for Wesley Soares, uh, leaving Municipal this summer at the end of his contract is this 21-year-old Peruvian player who, who looks pretty solid. Like, there's nothing to stand at, but he looks solid. Adrian Akus, I can't say his surname, but we'll work on it. He wants to be a squad player, which is absolutely fine. And on a grand a week, that seems... Uh, we need to bring a, a few of these down a little bit. 1.2, 1.5, let's say that and maybe get rid of some other clauses in there to make him a bit happier. Uh, suggest he wants a bit more money either way. How about six and four? There we go. Deal. And very quickly, the right back has agreed to sign for us. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit nervy about it because two and a half grand a week, he, he needs to be a very good player. I mean, I back us. I, I back the scouts who have done their, their job properly, but... Do I back my finances? I don't know. At least Tuesta has signed a new contract with us. And so has Lukau. And they are only slight increases on the wage. I think uh, £200 per week for Lukau and £100 per week for Tuesta. Like it's, it could have been a lot worse on those contracts. Oh, and luckily as well, the young midfielder also set to join us. So the two players we put deals in for are signing for us, which is great. Oh, 
I've also just seen the scouts have come through with this guy, John Rojas, who is a Venezuelan? Ven yeah, Venezuelan youngster. We don't know much about him other than he's got potentially five-star potential. And is coming to the end of his contract at the end of the month, literally in a week's time or so. He's six foot six. That would be huge, literally, in our division. Look, how much would he want per week? Because because if it's a cheap deal, I'm happy to sort of take a risk on this sort of player. And as a breakthrough prospect, surely he's only going to want a few hundred quid. But 200, if we can go 250 here, lad, and get rid of... Nah, let's go 300, get rid of the future ways for you to make money so you're happy with it. On a three-year deal, he wants 350. 350 over three, four years, he agrees. Like, if that works out, that could be an amazing transfer for us. And he's happy to sign for us as well, which is great. So that's a young... Would it, depends how good he is. We'll find out how good he is when he actually joins the club. All three of them are joining on the 4th of January, so that should be quite interesting to find out how good they are then. And actually, I'm glad I got these guys in quickly because there is still talk about takeovers, which have been going on for, like, all season, essentially. If they happen right now during the transfer window, that's going to be so frustrating for us. So I'm glad we've got these guys coming in already before anything like that happens. I want also more bugs. Uh, this review is telling us that we've won the title. We haven't. We, we, we genuinely haven't. It's Sporting Crystal look. <laughs> They've won it. Now, I might actually have a chance to get Moreno signed on a new contract. Actually, it looks like Danny Morales is, is pretty rubbish now. He keeps dropping off. I mean, it fundamentally still looks quite good, but I do quite like to trust the stars and football manager, so I'm more than happy to let him go. I do want to keep Moreno, though, because he has been quite good this past season. And okay, right. Squad player. Let's not mess this one up this time, Tom. He wants... Okay, right. He's currently on how much per week? 750. He's going to want 1.1 grand. Let's go 1 grand and get rid of some of these future ways to make money. Although, this is the offer that our assistant managers put down for him, isn't it? Uh, and he wants 1.2. Let's go just 1 grand. We can do 1 grand, lad. He wants 1.1. Look, for the sake of just getting him in, we'll do it. But we've now hit the 4th of July, and these three new signings have joined the team. So, uh, the centre mid, actually, is coming in to be a sort of a backup player. I actually does look pretty solid. I could see him starting quite a lot of games this season and he's still young enough to reach that sort of four-star potential that I reckon he could get to. Now, our new right back does look quite solid. Physically, is pretty decent, but I mean, fundamentally, is a good fullback, I would say. And if we compare him with Carlos Cabello, uh, they are very similar quality players. Uh, you could argue, actually, Cabello may be the slightly better player, but we needed someone else coming in on that right-hand side because we only had one player on the right-hand side, and I'm glad we've got this guy in who's as good, if not maybe ever so slightly more physical than Cabello. And then the young 18-year-old centre-back, uh, four and a half stars of potential, five, uh, two-star current ability. It looks solid enough as a good backup. We could probably do with someone else, though, I think. We could also do with another left-back, and one guy I'm particularly keen on is Robert Ergas, who is a Uruguayan 25-year-old left midfielder and can play left wing if needed, but also fairly decent in the wing-back spot as well. The only downside is the tackling's a little bit low. He might be better going forward, I don't know, and is quite pricey. We only have uh, £33,000 left of a transfer budget, which is not much at all. How much do these guys want? If we just suggest terms, it's... it's, it's I think we have to look cheaper. And we don't really have many scouted out. Uh, this Luis Henrique, though, Brazilian left back. Contract expiring in the net. He's valued at 30k, though. I reckon he could be a good value for money option, you know. I mean, the release fee clause is 30,000. I think mean, we might just have to trigger it, you know. Because he actually looks quite good value for money. And he only wants to be a fringe player, right? I, I'm, I'm feeling nervy. I'm feeling quite nervy now that he wants to be a fringe player and it's a cheap deal. It makes me think it's not that great. Comparing him with Kevin Moreno, yeah. Moreno's the better player. Um, so let's not get this guy in. Anthony Rossell, who's a Peruvian left-back, currently playing for uh, Sport Juan Cayo. Again, looks actually pretty solid, to be fair. And if we compare him with Kevin Moreno, very similar, but maybe he's slightly better, actually. The issue is he's going to be expensive. Uh, somewhere between, if I can find the pricing on here somewhere, 110 and 350,000 pounds. I mean, will you take 
25 now, and then over the course of three years, um, 75. Make it 85, that 110 actually, maybe that might be a little bit more sensible. Um, and they're actually open to that. If we pay an extra one point, let, let's get rid of that. We're not paying per game. But after 50 league appearances, we'll give you another 25 for 135,000. Is that sensible? And it also means we can bring in a non-Peruvian player as a centre-back. And there's this Ezekiel Navarro guy here who's quite short. So no. There is this Matias Mariotti. And if we compare him with Lukau, for example, if I can find Lukau on here... Very similar sort of player. We need someone better. In the meantime, the left back wants to be an important player. We can get you, I'm sure we can get you to a regular starter. Want to play as a, as a left back at full back. That's fine. He wants to be an important player. That's fine. He'll probably start most games anyway. 1.5 grand a week. We can do that. Get rid of percentage sale. Keep everything else the same. We can, we can, we can go 1.5. There we go. As Gabriel Delgado is leaving the club as well, he's signed a contract with Sport Boys, so um, have a nice time over there, lad. We never really have properly utilised the loan market. That is something we should probably look to try and do, but I presume it opens at some sort of point down the line. Also, Manucci want Juan Beltran. You're having a laugh. It's not happening. Reject it. Also, we have to adjust the budget to bring in Anthony Rossell. Okay, only by like... Pfft, Four, not much money. I was going to say four quid, but it's not four quid. It was like 34 quid. It's fine. It's fine. Adjusted budget. He's coming into the club. He's 28. It's it's experience, all right? It's experience, I, I hope. And he is better than Kevin Moreno as well, so it, it's an upgrade. Just as Moreno signs a, uh, <laughs> a new two-year deal. Now what we need to do is just find someone better than Lukau, if I'm honest with you. Uh, and Lukau's very good. That's the thing. But we can do better. I mean, the transfer window is open, but I presume it opens later in other countries, and that's why no one's available for loan. I mean, this guy at Boca Juniors looks quite good. 18 years old, I mean, looks all right. But if we go to make a loan offer, it's expensive. Like, if we get that down to zero and just pay his wages, that would be great, but we we can't afford it. We can maybe do, like... we can't, I don't think we can even do 10 grand a, a month, can we? No, like... Ha! Huh. We will be soon, though. We've just been given 2.15 million for being in the Copper Libertadores group stage. I mean, look at this bank balance now. Look at that! I mean, can we just have some money now? Like, can we, you know, increase the um the? We can't ask for more transfer budget. It's just not an option. What I might do though is ask to increase junior coaching, and I might ask as well if we can improve our training facilities. And whilst I'm at it as well, uh, networking increase youth recruitment and they said yes to training facility is going to cost us £750,000 but that's quite nice so we'll have some better training facilities to get our players better looking forward to that but they have rejected junior co they've accepted youth recruitment or whatever this one is youth recruitment yes which is now good but junior coaching they've said no right can you do better please um and they've just said yes straight away when I said can you reconsider and they have done so we've now got good youth recruitment and good academy coaching. There's two players here that I'm going to try and get in on trial who are both centre-backs with left feet, which is what we need. And then I want to see how they get on. So Rafael Santos and uh, Matias are both going to come in on loan. I mean trial, you know what I mean. But 19th of January, look at this. It's the Copa Libertadores group stage draw. Now, this is exciting. So, I really have no idea how this is going to go down. Uh, let's just draw some teams. So, I think I'm just going to keep drawing teams until we get put in it. Now, I think all the qualifying teams have already been drawn. Like, there's still four teams to be qualified. So, they go into group A, B, E, and H. So, we should now see other clubs drop into those groups by looks of things. So, where are we going to end up in all of this? I hope a nice group... A sporting Crystal are in Group D. They're the other Peruvian team in this. We've still not been drawn. And I'll be honest, I'd rather be in an A, an E, a H, or a B. Because they've still got teams that are qualifying right. So it suggests they're not quite as good. And actually, this team from Bolivia, I reckon we could probably take them. So I'm really hoping we could be in Group B. 
if that would be nice. So we're not in Group A. Come on, Group B. <sighs> we're in Group B, and that genuinely could be really nice. Because I don't know anything about this club from Bolivia, right? But I'm judging... <laughs> I'm being very harsh here. By the fact they're from Bolivia, I'm hoping they're not very good. Atletico Minero should go on to win that comfortably, shouldn't they? And actually, didn't we play the other Minero team in the Copper Sudamericana a couple seasons ago? But as the rest of the groups are, are drawn, we're in Group B, and that's all that matters to me. With the winner of the third qualifying round, Game 1. Do we know what that is yet? No, still lots of rounds to go there. Hopefully Cusco and Melgar, though, are one of those clubs and they get themselves into the Copa Libertadores. Oh, I wish we had some more money. Because Renny has just come up on the scout reports. And for whatever reason, is available quite cheap. Because this guy, in a lot of save files, turns out to be solid. Oh, why don't we have any money? Why aren't the board giving me more money? Please. 2.8 million in the bank and they won't give me anything. And even if we sell players, we're only getting 35% of the revenue. Oh, this is so frustrating. When the players who have their contract expiring in a week's time leave, we'll have an extra five grand a week in wages. I'm not quite sure how much we can actually put into the transfer budget. That might be the only way. Not that we need another right winger either, but I mean, oh, no, we, we can't bring him in. We've got like a million of them already. Oh, but imagine how good it would be to bring him in. Oh, it's so frustrating. We've got to focus on centre-backs though, and uh, the two that we've got on trial, we've no, we've got a full knowledge of them now. So if they're better than Lucao, they're worth bringing in. So Matias the Argentine, let's compare him with Lucao, and we're seeing a very similar player. Lukau better attacking-wise and technically, which aren't necessarily the most important things of a centre-back. So as a pure centre-back, he might be slightly better. Rafael Santos, though, who's a little bit younger, a little bit taller, compare him with Lukau, and we're seeing a player who isn't actually as good as Lukau. And if we compare Rafael Santos with whoever the other guy was, Matias... Matias is probably the better better option. Now, a one-year deal is fine, but 3.6 grand per week is not. That's not fine. Um, I mean, I know you're not quite as good. But if we're looking at contracts, right, how much do you want per week? You want 12 grand? Our top earner is our new right back on two and a half. I cannot just spend three and a half grand a week on you. You've got to bring it down to 2.5. And we'll bring the signing on fee up, although I don't think we can actually afford it. I mean, he's just not going to have it, is he? 2.6 for a year. It's for the Copa Libertadores, isn't it? I want to go on record, though, saying that I'm not happy with that signing, but it's literally the best we can get right now with preseason right around the corner. And so we've got to adjust the budget to actually pay a signing on fee. Right, that's a bit annoying. Um, 25 grand signing on fee or whatever it is. Look, he will be good. Uh, he's played at the top flight of Argentina. That is the top flight, isn't it? Please be the top flight. I, I don't think it actually is the top flight. If we just go up, it's, it's not the top flight. Um, so he's played second tier Argentine football. Um, I don't know why I'm cross. I'm cross about the wage. He's actually better than Luca. We looked at the graph. He is better. And it does make our team better as well, which is quite handy. Also what's quite handy is Melgar have qualified for the next round, the second qualifying round of the Copper Libertadores, which I think is where Cusco come into it. They do, and they're playing against a team from Colombia. I hope this is I think it's Colombia. And then they're also who are uh, Melgar playing against, they're playing against a team from Brazil. So I'll be honest, I don't really think it's the most exciting transfer win that we've ever had, but we've not really been given the money, and there weren't that many areas to actually improve on. But we have signed some quality players. Uh, Ortiz is coming in to be our best right back, which is improving, which is great to see. Uh, Rojas is one for the future, with five stars of potential now come to our, our coach, which is great to see. So it's six foot six, he'll be fantastic. Uh, Adrian coming in to be another solid player in the centre of midfield, offers us something slightly different as well. Uh, a better and our new best left back is fantastic, and a better centre back as well. So we have 
improve this team. Like we said at the start of the episode, we need to have a better team in order to, you know, beat Sporting Crystal and do well in a couple of Libertadores. We do have a better team. So I'm happy. I I'm happy. And I think we're going to have a good pre-season. And I think... We'll come back next time for a cracking Copper Libertadores. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.